Hey, Howard here at 82 Maple. And I gotta tell you, when I originally shot this video, I was overcome by frustration, anxiety, etc. over condensation issues caused by living in an RV for an extended period of time during the winter and what the outcome of all of that would be. My, any misgivings I had were magnified when a representative of a reputable RV dealer told me, Howard, you can't live in one of these for an extended period of time during the winter, heating it by propane. I don't know, did I overreact to that or not? You tell me, regardless, I somehow managed to conjure up a bit of a redneck solution that I think will see me through. But hey, let me know your thoughts. Hey, Howard here at 82 Maple, and we're going to talk about RVing during the winter. So the quick background story, if you hadn't seen any of my previous RV videos, is I've got this little unit located for the winter about 400 kilometers away from where I live. And this is on Sun Jordan's property, and uh, I'm down here about once a month for up to a week, and I want to keep this warm and dry and you know what at the core of that issue is that uh, it's a great four seasons camper but to keep it uh, really warm in all areas including the critical basement where all the water components and, li and key lines are running around down there and two holding tanks and a cold water tank uh, if we use propane we're going to end up with a couple of issues a uh, couple of things I don't want uh, and that is lots of mold, lots of moisture in the unit. Uh, did you know that burning a pound of propane apparently creates more than a pound of water? Tough to believe I'm throwing in a link down below. Enjoy and comment. Number two, I'd have to invest in uh, a large propane bottle uh, because uh, running on propane, I'd go through a bare minimum of a 30 pound bottle uh, every week. Probably more than that, the temperature here gets down as low as minus 10. And that's another critical factor. This last week it was down to minus 13. What I do want uh, between the reading between the lines here is peace of mind, provided by dry heat and a reliable system. So I had built a little box in which I intended to uh, feed hot air into the existing plenum. And so right inside the entrance here, you'll see that little vent. So in theory, uh, and after spending some time constructing that little box, uh, I was just gonna pop this cover, uh, which is pretty easy to do, and plumb into there and uh, drive the heat through. I discovered a couple of issues around that. And uh, one of the issues was in driving heat through there, the existing furnace fan becomes a barrier and it's just not going to be efficient. And so I had to come up with something else. And uh, the this particular uh, furnace unit actually made that fairly easy. I had to sit and think about it for a while, but the existing furnace unit has a great plenum with four or five outlets and the accompanying flex pipe that go to all areas of the camper. And when I say all areas, I mean down into the basement, which is insulated, and we're going to pop that cover off because I want to put a moisture meter in there and a temperature gauge, a remote. Um, it uh, pumps air into here. I don't trust the insulation on these doors, so I throw a little extra insulation in because again, it could pop down to minus 15. So I put a, a little temperature sensor and moisture meter up in there so that I can judge. You can see all the piping running around in here. You can even get a glimpse back there of the silver uh, heat ducting that comes into this area, wraps up around. I even have a heat duct right up in that overhead area there. And we'll go inside for a little bit better look. Let me just close this up. I uh, taped over uh, the speakers, which are wafer thin and allow a lot of cold in. And, uh, uh, and I was under the illusion somehow 
in looking at the furnace, and this is completely naive on my part, that this was the exhaust for the combustion, which it is, but that this here was an air intake, which it isn't. That's where any gases that would be harmful inside as a result of the combustion process are vented through. So, uh, and it, it may provide oxygen for the combustion process, but that's not where the air comes from that we heat up and recirculate. Where that air comes from is, and if you're wondering about that little heater on the floor, we'll get to that in a minute. Where the air comes from that is circulated through the various ventilation systems, it breathes through there. If we pull this cover, uh, and I'll throw in a couple of photos, there's an air intake on the right-hand side and the left-hand side of the furnace unit that is sitting back in here. Let's take a quick walk around. And I'm sorry if this looks like a little work area. This is going to be my workbench for the day. I've got some stuff laid out here, but there's a floor vent right across from the dinette a uh, breathing space for the critical tub components and drains and then as we go further along we have heat piped right into the bathroom here and i've discovered something else with this little uh, hot water tank on the electric setting the it, the surface temperature here you can see it for yourself it's over 80 degrees and that's not bad uh, incidentally, to assist me, yeah, I like that dries all stuff and and uh, that that powder and the little tray it sits in for uh, uh, keeping humidity down. But I threw a dehumidifier in here in the tub. I drilled a hole in the water catchment on the back of it so that. Uh, as this collects moisture, it's just going to go down the tub drain as long as I keep that plug out of there. And uh, so no harm, no foul there. But again, just a real tribute to Lance and their thoughtfulness. We're just going to go past the bathroom door and up here into the bed area. And wouldn't you know it, there's a heat vent right there. So what I discovered and I, you'll get the short version of the story, is that if I pull this cover down here and tape over and block this side, take a pair of pliers, open up these louvers a little more, you'll see that the louvers over here uh, are, sig well, it's tough to tell on the camera, but they're letting through about 50% more air from this side than these two louvers over here. So I've had great success with these little Honeywell heaters. Very reliable. I used one nonstop for six months in a crawl space area on the farm last year. And uh, then I uh, used it for uh, another couple of months this fall and not even a whimper out of it. They're, they're just bulletproof. So I've got it here on a low heat setting. This low heat setting right here is 750 watts. I can crank it up to the higher heat setting, which is 1500 watts. Set the temperature where I want it. And this has now been running for nearly 24 hours. And man, it's just changed everything. I've got my little remote sensors in place and I've got them labeled here. Uh, just going to set this down and uh, there we go. So that's what's happening. It's 68 degrees in the cabin, which is just where I like it. 39% humidity. Now sensor one, which is by my water pump. It's 71 degrees in there right now, 40% humidity. The cold water tank, it's still warming up, so it's down at 50 degrees. It's coughing out a lot of cold down there as it warms up. 69% uh, humidity, that's going to come down. Uh, we've only been pumping the electric uh, heater generated air in there uh, for under 24 hours. And then this is out where my dump valves are. And we'll take a walk around there. And so 
here's the deal. Coral and I, when the unit isn't stationary, we will do some cold uh, weather camping, but it'll be pretty limited and we can run the furnace for that. My issue is we ran the furnace three days at about minus 15 degrees and two days at uh, uh, about minus eight or 10. And the humidity was through the roof in here. And, and if you're an RVer, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, a couple of decades ago, three decades ago, when I was very young and even more naive than I am now, uh, uh, I had a motorhome that uh, I used continuously for a month that we were living in. And I literally had had a pair of dress shoes in a closet uh, and yeah, the closet door wasn't open all the time, but it was the most outstanding example of mold capture. I actually had green mold growing inside the shoes given the humidity levels in that unit. And we had to redo the whole, uh, the unit, remove everything from it, uh, clean it top to bottom, all sorts of chemicals in use and uh, get everything under control again. And that was after a month uh propane heat uh it was not occupied during the di business day it was occupied at night and uh it was just a disaster but winter has its issues for sure if uh we're going for an extended period of time uh, and we don't have the luxury of plugging in the little electric heater well then there's another alternative the generator on this uh, will crank out 2,500 watts. And like I say, this heater is adequate in mild conditions at 750 watts. Uh, if we need more, uh, 1,500 watts, we still have enough for ancillary whatever, as long as Coral doesn't plug in her hair dryer. Uh, and if we have neighbors nearby, I can tell you that the generator on this unit, the little Cummins Onan 2500 propane fired is really noisy and super annoying for the neighbors. I have a 2000 watt Honda quiet powered uh, gasoline generator that I would press into service if we're anticipating that. It'll keep things uh, chugging along really, really nicely. And uh, again, we have electric heat. What I'm really intrigued by, I'm sure there's good reasons, but here's the deal. We have, um, uh, as you will in any RV, uh, a water heater that is electric and gas run. We've got a fridge over here that has the same thing. We scroll through the modes using that button and we'll have uh, a 12 volt option. A, a, a liquid propane option and 120 volt option. And what I would really love to see is a propane slash electric furnace. Uh, that would be ideal, uh, but it may not be possible. I'm not an HVAC engineer, so I'm looking forward to comments below from, uh, from viewers that could help enlighten me. So this is the plan. And uh, again, I, I had my own apprehensions about how this was going to turn out and uh, everything is going in the right direction. This unit has been sitting cold and quiet uh, with just the heater on maintaining about uh, uh, 50 degrees in here. Uh, my son lives uh, right on the property, so he's been watching it for me. We've been warming things up uh, down there in the basement. And uh, I tried to place the uh, three monitors as carefully as possible. If you're wondering why this one over here is double labeled, when I vacate this unit after a couple of more days of being here, I'm going to pull the uh, most stable of the uh, uh, the sensor out of the most stable of the areas, which is here where the controls are located for the dump valves. Uh, it's nice and toasty warm. The humidity is pointing in the right direction. This has come down from 75 yesterday to where it's at now with 61 with the air pumping in there. So I'm gonna pull that sensor, throw it here onto the kitchen counter and take this sensor inside to my son, the, uh, not the sensor, 
but uh, kind of master control and information central. He's going to uh, 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 set it on a credenza and uh, he'll check in on it once or twice a day. He'll know without having to walk into the unit uh, exactly how it's doing. So there we go. Um, yeah, uh, I just am not comfortable with a heater sitting right on a piece of carpet. So a $12 cookie, easy clean uh, cookie sheet later. Um, I, I just feel a little bit better about it. Let's take a stroll out back outside. Okay, so here we are at the rear uh, driver's side area of the camper. We're gonna take a little peek into the dump valve area. And again, I don't trust the insulation and the thickness in these doors. Maybe I should, but you know what? It's not like I'm living five minutes away and I don't want this to become a burden for my son to maintain. And so I put a little bit of fiberglass insulation in there. Uh, you can see what we've got going on here and I really don't want all of this freezing up. So um, we're just going to take a peek Okay, with the assistance of my little flashlight, you can see the ducting that comes in here, and you can kind of get a sense right there of where it sends its warm air behind this panel. And then I put the sensor right here. You can just see the tip of it up over there. So this area should remain nice and warm. Hey, Stay tuned, more to come. There will likely be a part two to this where I report out on how this actually, actually turns out in real life. Okay, so there's one critical detail here that's at the heart of making all of this work. Uh, we've got a little control panel here for heat. And so under normal circumstances, this time of year running on propane, I would have this in the heat setting here. Uh, while I had the electric heater in during my absence uh, and in between times when I actually had to run the propane to keep this unit from freezing up uh, over the last month, uh, this was on off and we relied on uh, the electric heater alone to keep this area warm. It wasn't freezing outside and so the basement was going to be fine. As soon as I go to fan here, uh, what happens is my ceiling unit, my air conditioning unit comes on. It's fan only, so it's just the fan up there, but it's completely unnecessary. It's drawing power and it's not at all helpful to heating the unit. So how do I get rid of that? Well, I had to jump down here to my little control panel or my uh, breaker panel and we take a read and we see that there's an air conditioning breaker. It's the 20 amp one. It's this one right here. I turned it off and now I can run my furnace fan unimpeded by having to run this and I get great circulation. So um, when we look at the dump valve area and the uh, vent pipe that's in there. That's at the very end of the run. That is the farthest, farthest point from the furnace if you measure out the ducting that runs under this unit. And this little setup right here, blowing warm air into here, which is being picked up by those uh, intake ducts on either side of the furnace, then propelled by the fan, is responsible for taking that area in the dump valve area up to 58 degrees Fahrenheit, reducing the humidity, and uh, all while the temperature outside today is about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, there's a lot of cold area in walls and otherwise down there that hasn't completely warmed up given the uh, 18 to 24 hours that this has been running. So that's just going to get better and better as the material hangs on to some of the heat. Hey, I hope this has been helpful. You know what? Uh, this might seem like it's a little more work than hoteling it, but in my experience, it's not. 
and it's the added comfort and convenience that I have my own space. I don't have to carry a suitcase. My toothbrush is exactly where I left it. And uh, I have, uh, hopefully with this system, I have number one, reliability of a solid heat source that is hassle-free, meaning no slugging propane tanks around. Number two, moisture content that's acceptable and just a practical solution to one of the issues uh, relating to propane use, and that is the moisture content. Stay tuned. I assure you there will be more to come. I'm looking forward to your comments and uh, your suggestions on what I could have done. More, better, different. Safe travels. Happy travels. Happy travels.